So let's talk about this thing with cascading settings. And to pick up, uh, where is the screen that I'm sharing? I've just lost it. I'm looking at your Chrome tab. I'm showing the POC with your screenshot. Um, while you pull it up, Daniel, do you mind if I ask a clarifying question? Yeah, go ahead. For my posterity's sake. Mm -hmm. um, Dennis, when you were asking about this in Slack yesterday, you were asking Melissa if there's an agreed upon standard of doing this across stages. I was curious if you were referring to like the UI element of implementing this or if it was more a ephemeral question, perhaps is the way to say it, of how we do settings inheritance in general. Not sure what you mean by ephemeral. Um, like there are different mechanisms or different methods for settings inheritance across GitLab today. Were we talking about creating a set standard for settings will always inherit or not inherit by default? Or are we just merely talking about the UI implementation of for settings that do not automatically inherit and enforce them on their children, we're going to put in this UI element to make that happen. It's kind of across the board. Um, and I, I feel like the, the UI or the UX patterns will, will influence that in a way, right? Um, so just to, to provide some context for my, why I asked is I know that compliance is working mm -hmm. on, on settings inheritance and so is access. Right. Yeah. And I know there's been work across groups that have been referenced um, uh, as part of that thinking, the, that, of, as part of that design thinking. Um, what I was curious about is, you know, as we are progressing in these two separate groups for these for a similar concept mm -hmm. um, across these two contexts, is if there's if if the work is being done collaboratively or not, I guess, and that's okay. there, there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah. particularly, but what I'm curious about is if, because we're, we're doing settings inheritance in a seemingly simpler fashion right now, right? But we've had discussions mm -hmm. about how this gets more complicated with tables or how we use templates for things such as like um, roles and that has implications on how you inherit, in, inherit permissions mm -hmm. and things like that. So this is a really long way of teeing it up. So thanks for sticking with me. But <laughs> the idea is that could, um, are there opportunities for us to be consistent with the simplistic approach now, uh, especially as we, as at least as a, as a stage, as we get into more, at, at some point, more complex um, patterns later on, because that will also influence, I would imagine, to a significant degree, how the back end is designed. Because if we have two different patterns in the UX, we probably have two different ways in the back end to store it, and then that just kind of continues to propagate. As I'm sure there will be a lot of need for settings inheritance throughout the rest of the product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we can consolidate that or try to be consistent, that that again, that's my personal opinion or my my personal speculation. You know, mm -hmm. if we can be consistent across the stage, perhaps we can propose that pattern to use across the rest of the product. Okay, cool. If we, if we think that's applicable here. That that was the yeah. original asking of my um, reason why I asked. Yeah, I think that's we are working collaboratively. Um, I think this proposal that Austin had here was kind of like the best first attempt. Uh, specifically, if we go to like the um, origination, was the uh, this idea of deleting groups was going to be the first idea mm -hmm. to to test with this feature. So adding a single line item makes perfect sense. It doesn't really change the UI much, and it's only going to appear in one specific dropdown, one setting here, which is um, enable delayed project removal, right? It's gonna be just a sub a one line under that. So I think the idea that Austin has here is just the perfect start. My pushback or the, the I guess the next iteration topic of discussion is this idea of tables and toggles is that what happens when we want to expand this behavior across the entire setting. So one of the things I was doing was going through all the setting screen and looking at everything that's a specific setting that could feasibly be a item to toggle on and off or activate because toggling or checking is not 
I don't know if we've come to an agreement on that based off of how the behavior of toggle versus checkbox works and its requirement for like a save settings button. So for example, like this needs, the settings currently exist with these save buttons all over the place uh, whenever you make a change, right? Um, uh, before uh, we debate like the toggle checkboxing or yeah. um, talk about that, could you go back to that screenshot that you showed from the one that I, I guess, pulled from, I think Jeremy's or Jarek's suggestion from back in the day? Because um, I want to point out like where I have really struggled with, this? yeah, mm -hmm. whether it's a checkbox or a toggle, this is a really good example of, it's very confusing of how we're going to implement this in general, because if we look at committer restriction, it's applied to projects unless overridden by an admin. So it's inherited across projects. I don't know, I haven't checked, what happens if I do committer check whether author is a GitLab user. So the thing I have to ask myself with each setting is, first of all, does a setting apply to only new projects or does it apply to new and existing projects? That's the first like bit of logic. And then the second logic is, is the setting flexible, meaning can the project person change it or is it enforced? So I think that's like where my first like confusion point ends up landing with all of the settings is what happens when the parent checks or unchecks the toggle, how is that enforced or not enforced? I think that's where I struggle with creating the standard is it's almost like every setting is different, mm -hmm. which could then make it a very confusing UI because you'll have some toggles in some areas, you won't others which I guess is fine. We are currently saying what happens in text today, um, but I wasn't sure how we could address that. So, in, in my mind at least, and maybe it's because I haven't audited every single setting, it's like what I would expect to happen, right? Is that whatever value is set, these values are all, at least for the ones that are checkboxes, right? pretty binary yes, no, right? Mm -hmm. right? And if I set something at the, an apparent, right? I would expect that mm -hmm. same value to be propagated down whether it's existing or non-existing. Uh, meaning for groups that are currently, groups and projects that are underneath and moving forward. I know there may be technical limitations about on that, but I'm just speaking of about like the desired outcome, right? And what I would expect, so it's like, this is my top level group, right? If I go in here and set committer restriction, I would expect that every single group underneath now would have this checked, right? After I confirm the option in some way. Um, to me, the allow overrides, right? Is whether or not that value can be changed in uh, objects below this, right? So, and that's what I was envisioning with the Epic um, and the work that Drew has been doing. And we're kind of scoping it to namespace settings at this time, where it's gonna behave that way. We're basically somewhere in the hierarchy, you can define a value and we're um, calling it locking, right? And then it's locked, meaning anyone, any group or project under that level can't edit that value anymore. And it's sort of, um, it's almost like you're taking the value of the parent and that's what you're using in your group of project. And I know that that may be more complicated for things that aren't yes, no, right? Mm -hmm. And more additive, right? Where um, the way I envision working it for something um, like, for example, uh, I don't know, like something that's a list is that you would get a list from your parent mm -hmm. and then maybe that's something where we have to have slightly different behavior where it's like, can you add to the list or not, right? It's not as simple as yes, no. Yeah, I, I mean, I share the same feelings. But that's why I specifically wanted to start with our work with something that's yes, no, so mm -hmm. that we can at least get that part um, kind of uh, figured out from the back end perspective, and then we can expand it to um, worry more like for example the ip addresses just to take an example that that one's not a valid example because it's only available at the top level group but anything that's a list potentially could we could think of something like and i consider that feature iteration right where you can add to a list but certain elements are uh locked so to say mm -hmm.
Okay. But yeah, at yeah, least for I'm... namespace settings, most of these are yes, no, which is mm -hmm. fairly straightforward. Or single value. Yeah, that's sort of what I was trying to do here was looking at all the settings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, the thing I was trying to share was I went down a similar path with like push rules and got a ton of pushback trying to like introduce a way to lock these checkboxes with push rules. And a lot of it came from just struggles with like how to implement all these independent logic checks and in dealing with all the individual styles of inheritance um, for each one. And then, yeah, just trying to like, create a standard. It, it seems easy, but then I, I couldn't come up with a standard myself, so. Like, do you mean like a visual and behavioral pattern or where was the issue? I'm just curious because. Yeah, I can try and in depth on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me try and um, gonna chase, chase that down. Over. Yeah, you go ahead, and Daniel. I'll go. I'll go look for that. Uh, just to kind of elaborate on that, um, I had made like a really rough logic flow to understand how the process functions, and I spoke with Melissa earlier about this, and that the idea being that the setting would be able to interact externally from, uh, excuse me, the cascading setting, yes or no toggle we want to do would act externally from the setting that's being impacted. So you could then enforce it kind of with the toggle idea that we had with the table. And it's not necessarily reliant on you pressing a save button, so to speak. I think that's what we, we kind of came to a discussion about. Um, yeah, like to me, whether it's setting a value of yes, no, or saying like apply it to lock it or whatever those two are changes to configuration to me they're you know they're not different so if we choose to you know ask someone to click save when you're changing the actual value or when you're changing the um locking they're equal actions, at least for me. And that may be something that we want to test, right? Or ask more people. Yeah, to me, it just seems like a difference in how you actually have the setting take effect, but it still correlates to a Boolean value, right? So I guess that's part of what I'm curious about is if that needs to be a, an idea we need to kind of have consistency on as well. Well, going back to what Austin had said, that there's so much variation in the way settings are written and implemented. I think that's one big problem. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be a simple fix like, oh, we'll just fix everything at once and then change everything and then confuse all our, end, our users. But that's something definitely that will be a problem. And I'm not sure if we should budget some solutions time for that, right? Some thinking about some fixing of that. Um, yeah, well, taking a step back, Austin and Jarek, I don't know if I've shared kind of like what we're trying to do holistically <laughs> with this like delayed deletion. That's just the first setting, but this is the exact problem that we're looking to solve, that there is a lot of variation between settings, how they relate to groups and projects below them, when they're inherited and not inherited, when they're allowed to be changed and not allowed to be changed. It's very inconsistent, right? So what we we're finding in the access team is that we were getting one-off requests, like fix this setting, fix this other setting. I want like an option to lock it. And instead of doing that, basically we decided let's build a pattern, right? To define, basically allow settings to be inherited and locked or, you know, not inherited and basically have a way to more basically um, uh, more of a framework that we can apply to each of these settings so that it is consistent in the future. And we've chosen delayed project deletion first because it's one that came up in conversation around, you know, customers expect that if they set this on a specific group, it will be inherited for their subgroups and it's a fairly sensitive thing. Um, but it, 
it's not the case, right? So then we chose this as the first test, right? But we will eventually be going through everything that's in the namespace settings uh, area and migrating it to behave this way. And we will have to do some of that like investigation about each setting, what does it do today? Like, and like each one of them will be analyzed independently. So I did chase down the issue um, that I was talking about where I kind of went through this with um, some of the foundations team. I want to say this was like last fall sometime. And so I also had like a similar idea with Daniel of like putting in a toggle using the allow override. And we were looking through like different ways of basically saying, no matter how this setting is, in, is inherited, um, whether or not you want to allow somebody to change it. Um, so, I mean, even if you're not checking the box, you might want no one to check that box. Uh, and so we were toying through all those different ideas, different ways of trying to show status. Um, the way that I, I think it had boiled down to at some point in time was we talked about doing, I don't know if any of these other designs are going to be helpful or not. No, I don't think so. Was doing that like singular checkbox under each one, but um, ultimately, I know what we ended up opting for, at least as a tentative plan for push rules, was considering uh, the job that our users want to accomplish was understand when projects are using different push rules and be able to like reset them back to what they're parent object is using. So we were creating an area in the compliance section of GitLab to show you here are the projects that are having deviating push rules. If you want to apply their settings back to what their parent has, there's a singular action that you can do that. Um, that was our workaround for just avoiding doing a individual toggle on every single setting. Because these are also what we thought too are simple, like binary, single things that, uh, uh, well, the commit messages, some of the drop downs are more complicated, but the initial ones. Mm -hmm. So, one thing that I was talking to Daniel or, this morning is that maybe a way, and this is sort of like a weird idea, <laughs> but Daniel seems to get it, but maybe a way to avoid having checkbox everywhere is that there's somewhere else where you define basic, we have some default behavior, right? Where we say mm -hmm. things inherit and they're not overridable, right? That's like baseline. And there's somewhere else, uh, maybe it's like behind a gear here and some modal or something where you are allowed to make exceptions to mm -hmm. that. And we position it that way. So that way you don't need to have this checkbox everywhere. And it's just um, sort of like advanced configuration almost. So kind of to expand on that, the idea being like perhaps there's an admin unlock or lock button somewhere on the screen, like say, for example, or on this screen where it says use default settings, there's like a little mm -hmm. lock icon and you hit that. And then like you have the column of checkboxes or toggles that appear with the admin feature to enforce um, in a cascade feature or uh, allow, uh, you know, that inheritance. Um, another kind of idea around that would be something that uh, we've been working on like parallel to this or kind of separate from this was like um, an admin authentication mode for the environment or like a profile switcher for admins. This is not directly related to the, the topic, but something that just popped in my head because this would theoretically be admin only changes or group owner. So having some way to allow that admin or owner to activate that feature to, to change those settings. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to highlight a couple of the ways that other teams are trying to solve a similar problem. So like with JIRA integrations, if you configure at the group level your JIRA integration, you can set a sensible default for all your projects, but they have an out. So they can pick to choose custom settings and then change things, and then they can go back to their default settings. Um, I even noticed like with auto DevOps, like you can check the box in the admin area and that will show up at your project. It, it'll automatically check auto DevOps for you, but there's still like a way out of it. You can uncheck it yourself. So I was just 
-hmm. exploring all the different avenues that I've kind of seen different teams like take towards this approach, but it doesn't necessarily handle the reality of what do you want to do when you enforce them. One of the few areas I'm aware of that actually enforces things is if you define um, merge request approvals at the uh, admin area, that's going to be inherited at a project level and you cannot change it. So it's like already automatically enforced. But what I've been, been told by other engineers is that is a unique pattern that more often things are inherited and customizable. Um, I think it's unique, but it's a problem for customers. <laughs> like they want things to be locked and unchangeable. I agree. Like I, I feel like the whole thing should be, if it's a parent setting, it should be inherited and restricted. That's my Yeah, I agree. That's opinion. That's why I feel like having a flow where admins can choose what they want editable. Mm -hmm. Right. And then everything else by default. And this is like feature, right? When we've implemented everything. Um, and then by by default, you can't change it. And admins can choose if they want it changed, if they want to allow it. Right. And mm -hmm. then that makes it easier than having to choose a option for every single setting. Like, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And maybe the but then, default then is I worry everything that we're making is too restrictive of an environment, yeah. and then I was gonna say, bad. <laughs> I was gonna say maybe That's the what customers want that, right? <laughs> maybe I, mean, the, I don't know. Help, maybe help me, help me understand. Yeah, okay. I mean, because help me understand this, just because I'm I've, I've been making a lot of faces. I don't know if I'm <laughs> trying to understand this. The question, the 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 way it's been is that people, as thing as settings propagate downwards, you inherit and can expand on it or tweak it. Mm -hmm. But the question I feel is starting to become, and I guess the, or the question that you need to, like, the answer changes depending on the customer is, do we want to flip that and have that just completely locked down? Like if it's set at the high level, do you just lock only? Or I guess what's being explored right now across different spaces is do you lock, do you allow block, do you lock, but allow them to enhance from there, right? Like, I guess I'm just trying to like have a mental inventory of like what we're trying to explore right now. Um, yeah, I think you're right. There's two different problems, right? One is inheritance of setting values because that's not even consistent today between everything. And from what I understand, everyone has to build their own rules behind that, where I think, I hope <laughs> everyone would agree that settings should be inherited, right? Always. And then whether or not you allow someone to change them is the part that's more controversial, right? Whether it's locked or just like inherited, but editable. Mm. Yes. We only so have then, a couple minutes left. I don't know if anybody had any outstanding questions. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure we knew what we we're doing in the near term, right? So it sounds like we want the in the near term the pattern of a of a checkbox under the value that is basically lockable, and then have I would like at least to have like consistent that and text between our two groups. That's sort of what I was thinking also. Um, just the one feature in parallel with what Austin had done is makes logical sense. It doesn't change the UI too much and it's a conduit for the back end to test the functionality to make sure everything works. And then the next iteration we can say, okay, how do we scale this up? What's the next thing? Do we have to go inventory all the settings and say we need a total rewrite of the settings to make them logical and uniform? Or is it, oh no, it's a simple fix because we can do it this way and problem solve. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking at this point. I was just going to jump in. Uh, thanks for inviting me to this. And it's an uh, interesting problem to try and solve. And, you know, I go back to like, just go with an MVC, simple, like use a checkbox um, and not, you know, I know we explored the toggles and I know we explored a few different things and I don't have all the context still. Um, but, you know, if I'm taking anything away from this, I would just say like MVC iterate because um, it's kind I of a, it's a pretty complicated problem. Yeah, I think what the struggle I've seen is we have so many MVCs in flight and then there's no synthesis to a decision. So a great example is merge request approvals, MVC, they're automatically inherited and enforced. 
but then Jira integration is inherited, but not enforced and customizable. And then push rules are only applying to new projects, not even your existing projects. So it's inherited, but only to new things. So we have all these MVCs in flight and then we're not coming together and deciding on what makes the most sense if we even should have them all do the same thing. Um, so I guess my fear is we have yet another MVC. So I, what I wanna know is if we go with Daniel's MVC that, or well, really what Melissa and Daniel are both proposing, should we then revisit merge request approvals, take out the ability to automatically enforce and put in these toggles there as well? Yeah, I, I agree. And that's that's the main main thing is that I think we've already encountered this with whether it's permissions in general or like our object model, right? Where we just kind of MVC off into different directions. And when it's time to come to reconcile, it's, it's a multi-year effort or a very expensive whatever effort generally. Yeah. Um, I'm not, sorry, didn't want to specify any, any initiative in particular, but I, I, you know, if we can, if I think we're doing I think we're in a good spot right now, right? We know where the MVCs are, they share a lot of commonality already. And we know that what the next steps are in terms of inventorying the patterns so that we can try to find a solution that may work best or not. That's also a very viable thing. Um, but the fact, I think that we're having this conversation now and then also we'll continue to hopefully, um, will will help us from NBCing too far away from each other. <laughs> so to say. The one lesson I will share from what I've heard so far with merge request approvals from what's being inherited from the admin area is I think generally users have liked the fact that they're locked down. However, the system doesn't tell you why they're locked down. And that is what I think could be confusing as someone that is managing a project is you have these read-only settings and it doesn't tell you why. You have an issue open to clarify why, but I think that is the one struggle is if you're enforcing things, we have to provide some system status as to why that is. Because you and don't from necessarily the, are a group owner or an admin. That's from the instance enforcement that you admin were Admin area, okay. yeah. So the admin area, you can check a box and at the project level, it's gonna disable that box and you can't do anything with it. Um, and so, if you don't like that, then you can't do anything about it. Or at the very know. least, a link to documentation where you can go mm -hmm. a little bit more in depth, um, mm -hmm. going beyond a popover or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, something like, I don't know, some section in pajamas of like, here's how we handle settings, inheritance, and enforcement would mm -hmm. be great. Because it's totally viable in the, con in the context of compliance, locking things down from the top and then going down. Is totally acceptable. Whereas with t topics related to access, where you can lock things but then expand on them as you go down, is totally acceptable. But I just want to make sure that people are aware of these as it's this is not going to be the last time access or compliance are going to be touching these types of things. And I'm sure mm -hmm. other groups are going to touch it as well. That's uh, exactly why I invited Jarek, is because I wanted yeah. uh, foundations to be a part of this. Because I going back to what uh, Austin had said that there's many of us that are trying to iterate on this and do MVCs and we're coming at this from different ways. And I think we might actually be at that point where we need, probably need to reevaluate the, set, re the settings and clean them up, which I think is what uh, Hayana and uh, Alex Lee are working on sort of to some capacity. Um, but definitely as part of that, this unifying it moving forward, um, I would agree that, you know, try and keep everything as simple as possible and not getting too wild. As far as next steps, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, so we agreed the checkbox and consistent text between the two of us. And then it sounds like we have more conversation just to make sure maybe we can internally between us just formalize how we believe the settings should work, right? And be inheritance from the compliance and access perspective. And then Jarek, we can share that with you and you can decide if that's something that the foundations team would be kind of like interested in yeah sure I mean you know again I don't have a ton of context so I'll definitely but I definitely want to you know help uh, take part in the conversation and sort of you know take what I know with components and uh, relations uh, between elements and things and sort of you know add that to the conversation so yeah feel free um, I'm happy to provide feedback and review stuff all right well, we're all in, in contact with each other pretty often, so we'll we'll keep this in check for sure. So thanks everyone for for uh, acting on this very quickly, and thanks Daniel for scheduling. Hey, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks Daniel. See you everybody. See you.